Good afternoon. Hope everyone's well. Thank you for joining us. Just going to go through all of our checks as normal. Going to check everything is working. Um, hopefully, yeah, hopefully everything's fine. Hopefully you've all had a good week as well. Let's just check that that sound is coming through. Everything is working. Right, that's coming through a good bit louder than normal. Um, if it's a problem, if it's a bit too loud, let me know and I can turn the microphone down a bit because uh, I have adjusted a few settings. So hopefully it's not too bad. I'm just thinking as well, do you want to check it on your device, did? Okay. Right, um, yeah, today. Oh, hello there. Who's joining us? Aubrey, Fernanda. Hope you're well. Let me know if um, it's too loud or if there's any issues in terms of the stream because I've changed a few settings. Hopefully it might be an improvement, but if not, let me know and I can sort it out. Um, yeah, first thing I'm going to show you, uh, what we're going to be working on today. Right, these first ones. Um, sound is fine. Hello, all. Brilliant. Thanks for letting me know, Aubrey. Hello to the carver too. Um, hope everyone caught the uh, the the latest video of the carver very appropriate for St Patrick's Day last week so I hope you all saw that one it was a good fun video I certainly enjoyed that one so yeah well worth having a little look at uh, these ones starting off these are off cuts for when we do clocks now when we do a clock one thing you have to do oh somebody else has joined us just check who that is Sawyer Rob I thought so from the colour hello there. Thanks for joining us all. Um, yeah, great to have you all with us. These two are little off cuts from when we do clocks. So when we do a clock, you have to cut out the middle bit. But as you can see, you end up with this hole in them. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what I'm going to do with these, I'm going to cut them out on the scroll saw and I'm going to use them as bases for something I demonstrated in another live stream. So that's one of the things that I'm going to be doing today. Another thing then I'm going to demonstrate is the making of a very simple little trinket box. So to start it off, what I've actually done, I have cut out, well I've drilled a little hole ready for doing the pierce work and I'm going to cut the inside first of all because I've stuck um, a little thin piece on top of the main body of the box. So I'm going to show you the process for how I scroll saw out a very simple trinket box. Again, these pieces have been stuck on and I'll show you as we go along the process of making it. But to get us started, I thought we would start off keeping things nice and simple after um, last week's up and down live stream, shall we call it. I thought we'd keep it nice and simple. I've got two thin pieces of teak stuck together and the idea is we're gonna just cut out some simple star shapes. So this is a perfect project for anyone who is learning uh, scroll sawing and is really at those first sort of stages of that process of learning. Uh, let's just explain as well. We had an email from Kevin. He was asking us a few things, a few different questions, and one was about technique. So I've got a video coming up on this dedicated to it. I'm going to do another one for Kevin to answer some specific questions. But what I try to do when I'm scroll sawing, I use one hand to clamp and I use one hand to guide. As I said, I've got a few videos coming up on that specifically, and I will go into more depth. But he was asking me about techniques for holding things, that sort of things. Um, other things then, when it comes to setting up your scroll saw, one thing I always do, we, we don't use, um, yeah, sorry, not that we don't use, we use a set square to set up our machine. So when it comes to your blade, you'll see different methods for setting up. What we tend to use is a set square to make sure that the blade is cutting square. Because this table's adjustable, it can get knocked at different times, but every now and then I will check to see that that blade is square in the holder and so it can cut out accordingly. Let's get into it. Let's show you then simple processes for cutting out these, which can either be turned into star-shaped key rings or star-shaped Christmas decorations. And notice there's one more comment before we start there. That is from uh, Rustic Woody. Hello from sunny Norfolk. Hello Rustic Woody from sunny West Wales. Hope the sun is shining wherever you are. Um, yeah, it's sunny West Wales here. A bit colder, but a nice sunny day. And we've had a nice sunny weekend too. Let's get into it. What's the worst that can happen?
Things are going better than last week already, I reckon. So let's have a little look. We got our two little, there we are, our two simple little star shapes. You could put a letter or um, you could, as I said, turn it into a key ring, fridge magnet, whatever you want to do really. But um, nice, simple little beginner's project that one, just getting you used to cutting out that outline. Uh, we use, as we mentioned many times, that Niqua Speed number nine reverse tooth blade. And it gives you a fine enough finish that you don't have to do much sanding once you finish cutting out. So those are some of the sort of advantages. Uh, look, there's another thing you could do. You could possibly stack them all together to create some sort of um, some sort of sculpture or something. So a simple little project. Let's go on to now cutting out our two bases. So these are just offcuts from making clocks. We got loads of these, so it's great to be able to use them for something. Big part then of why we do our live streams. Hopefully it's an opportunity for anyone to ask any questions, anything you're not sure about, if you're learning, scroll soaring, uh, anything at all, let us know. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can help out in a way. Um, um, the idea as well with doing the scroll soaring, it, 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 you know, the live streams is to share the methods that we use, to share techniques, that might be useful that you can apply to, to your own scroll sawing. We're hopefully as well in this one, we're gonna do a little bit of carving later on as well. But for now, we got this thicker piece of mahogany and we're gonna cut out that heart shape. Nice for me to carry on in here. That's Thomas the Woodcarver in the background. Yeah, you carry on. Make a noise, are, are you gonna make a lot of noise? Well, you tell me if it's too much. Okay. Okay, so one of the techniques that you can see us using then is to cut into that edge like so, reverse back out, continue around that outside line, and then turn it back around and to cut there. It just gives us a sharper, finer finish. Because we're using that reverse tooth blade as well, you get a finer finish on the back edge. So it just means there's less um, time spent hands uh, sanding, also what you can hear dad working on in the background on the belt sander as well. So yeah, saves us a little bit of time. Let's just check, have I missed something? Uh, that's one bar, it's Chris just joining us. Hello Chris, thanks for joining us. Uh, as we're saying, any questions or anything, get them into us. Hope all is well, hope everyone is well. And uh, hopefully what we're doing, hopefully it might be useful. Right, we're gonna cut out this one and then our attention's gonna focus on our main project, which is making our little trinket box.
So if I focus on some of the techniques that we're using, um, you'll notice, like for instance, I'm holding this down, that, that hand, our hands have got to act as our clamps. So as you'll have noticed from last week, otherwise everything starts bouncing around and breaking and things like that. So we have to make sure that our hands are clamping and also guiding. There is an attachment that you can get for this scroll saw where you can put an arm on there and it'll hold it down for you. I don't get on with it. Most people don't get on with it. For instance, my brother Math, he's, he, he likes it. He uses that. He finds it difficult to scroll saw without that attachment. But myself, I, I prefer to, to have it without and use my hands to guide and clamp at the same time. Again, highlighting that little technique where we cut into a sharp edge like so, we then turn it round and cut again into that to give you a nice, uh, fine, precise finish on the top of the heart. That gets us nicely warmed up. Um, I'm thinking, learning from last week's scroll saw demonstration, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna change over, um, I'm gonna change over our scroll saw blades so that's the first thing that I'm going to do when making the trinket box. Have a nice, sharp new blade and um, yeah, see how we get on from there. I'm actually finding as well, I've ordered some more blades because this was a question that I was asked by Kevin uh, about getting hold of Nikwa Speed blades. Uh, I've bought some blades. I am actually still waiting for them to arrive. So I hope there's not going to be a problem with that because I know they're ourselves we've been having a lot of difficulty with the um with brexit and all that sort of thing um we we've actually stopped sending love spoons to europe because we're getting so many diff difficulties with with sending stuff so i hope that our blades will arrive without a problem but it is taking us a little bit longer to receive them than, than i would hope i've also spoken with hegner uk and um yeah, I, I keep trying to get them to uh, make the Nikwa Speed Number no. 9 Reverse Tooth Blade available again. Unfortunately, uh, they haven't at the moment, but fingers crossed they might do. Let's have a little look as well. Uh, uh, Thank you very much. Yeah. Hello there. Hello there, Mr. Mr. Steele. Thank you for joining us. Hopefully it'll be useful. Hopefully it'll be interesting. Uh, any comments as well, let us know. Um, yeah, always, always a pleasure. Right, we will cut out this trinket box now. pause it there because for instance um, what you can see I've just done the first part of this process of cutting that out is to cover up where I've originally drilled that hole so that's the first thing I'm actually doing is to cover up where that drill hole has gone in it also means that the off cut we can use afterwards and um, so it just it just basically it makes it a better job all round what I've actually done I've got two pieces stuck together so I've got a thicker piece for the box and then there's a thinner piece that I put on the top and that will be stuck to the lids so it allows the lids to sit on top of the trinket box nicely. So hopefully, just to give you a little insight into the method and the process that we're gonna use for making uh, our trinket box.
So because we're using a thicker piece of wood, you'll notice the feed speed is a fair bit slower. We've got this little piece here that will be stuck on the inside of the lid and that will allow us then to, um, for that lid to, to sort of sit on top of the box without it just sort of sliding off. It also means that we don't have to worry about hinges. Uh, there's a few different methods you can use. I know there's one where you put a little uh, screw or a nail and then it just open it, sliding it back and forth. You can put hinges on. But this I think is a really simple method and it requires no you know, hinges, no pins, anything like that. Later on as well, that one there, for instance, where we cut out that heart shape, that could be used. You could split it and turn it into a few key rings or fridge magnets. Uh, you could use it as a base for something. So you've got that off cut, you can use it. And that's what a lot of our live streams, that's what we're doing in a lot of our live streams, is just demonstrating how you can, uh, you can make every little you know, bit within reason you can get the most out of the woods that you're you're using to be most productive. As I mentioned, then the, the, the feed speed's a good bit slower. Excuse me two seconds while I get the super glue because we have to glue this together. Yeah, the feed speed needs to be slower. Um, that's because we're working with a thicker piece of wood. We also have to change our technique slightly because um, the, the the technique for um, the technique for um, cutting for cutting out the bottom, for instance, we can't go to that sharp point and then reverse and come in at a different angle. We need to try and get it done all in one cut. Now, the first thing I'm going to do before I stick this down, I'm going to check. Right, now, I'm going to redraw it first of all because I've gone and pulled the top layer off. Clever trick. I haven't marked it out on there, have I? No. So what we'll do, we'll remark it out. There we are. I've taken that top layer off. The reason for it, we don't actually need that on there now. And the less thickness that we've got to cut out, the easier that it's going to make things for us. So the thicker the cutting, the more demanding it's going to be for our scroll saw. So we're remarking it out. On there like so. So the reason I can do this freehand is that we're using that, we're using the gap that we've already got. And then just using that roughly guessing to get a little bit of distance in and around it. Right, we try and judge which face is going to sit on the scroll saw base. Yeah, so that's going to sit on the scroll saw base the most successfully. So a little bit of the accelerant for our Starbond super glue, four little dots, four dots of super glue in each corner. We super glue it back together. So you only need that one little piece for the internal cuts that will be used for the lid. And then afterwards, now I've actually thought about this again. Hang on now, hold your horses. If I, if I super glue those two level, layers together, here we are. This is where you're planning out as you go in. If I super glue that layer to this one, then that means that I've got the base sorted. I don't have to super glue it again. So let's, let's do that. Hopefully it will all become clear. What it is, the top layer that I've got going on there is, is, the, is the base to the box. So you have to super glue those together anyway. If I'd have thought about that before, I'd have made myself look clever, but there we are. Never done it before. Never done it before on anything that I've done, so why start trying to look clever now? So what I've done, by doing that, there we are. It saves the stage afterwards of gluing the base to the box. Hopefully, our blade is going to be able to handle this. I will admit, if you look back in our videos, there is a demonstration where I managed to break the scroll saw, cutting out a box very similar to this. So let's have a go, let's try and cut it out.
Right. Okay, so we have got most of our simple little trinket box completed. A little bit of sand in we would possibly need as well. And then from here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to carve a little flower. And then just to show you as well, see that piece. Um, I'm not going to stick it on yet because I'm going to do some carving first of all. But that little piece gets stuck onto the inside of there. So it allows you to uh, have that box lid sit inside the trinket box without it moving around. But it just shows you it's a very simple method for making a trinket box. What I'm going to do, I'm going to move across then to our carving bench, to our workbench, and I'm going to show you the process that I would go through from here to turn these into uh, finished or as close as possible to finished products. Bear with me while I move the camera and the lights and I'll demonstrate how to finish them off. And I will check as well if I miss any comments. Uh, if it works, then great. If it doesn't work, well, it sounded like a good idea at the time. Good tip about checking the blade square. Just check mine and it wasn't quite square. It is now. Yeah, I mean, it makes a huge difference to your cutting, especially if you're trying to cut square. <laughs> um, it makes a big difference if you've got that blade square on. Um, certainly something that can, uh, that, that can make a, a difference. And because different machines, I know with ours, it has a guide for you to use under under the machine. It has a guide for you to use. What I actually find is that the guide is not square. So by using a set square instead, you know that that set square is square, basically. So let's just adjust this camera. Bear with me because I'll need to focus it as well. Right, now... This is a simple little carving that you've seen me demonstrated many times. But a lot of our videos, a lot of what we do is geared towards giving you simple little tips and ideas to turn whatever you've created, turn it into finished products. Any questions as well as we go along, remember, get them into me. I've, you may notice that I've, how can I put it? This week I've gone back to basics a little bit because uh, Last week, we were demonstrating what to do when you mess it up by messing it up again and again. Right, so I'm just doing a little bit of sanding. I know I should really be using a, a block for doing that, but it'll be okay for this. And all I'm going to do, we're going to roughly pick our center spot. And this is what we do then a lot of at our family workshop is to combine the skill of scroll sawing with the skill of hand carving and that's what we feel gives us um, quite sort of unique uh, an individual gives our identity then to a lot of our products and a lot of this then see these are all off cuts of wood so these ones that I demonstrated those are those clock um, those are from where we do the clocks so where you cut out the center for the clock movement to fit into. That's where they come from. And then these ones, these are actually just offcuts of mahogany that a, a school teacher brought into us years and years ago. And then we can turn them into all sorts of simple little items. So what I'm carving here is a five petal, uh, five petal, petal plower, a five petaled flower, sorry, and the way I carve this then, it's sim a series of simple stop cuts. And whilst it's, um, this is actually the carving that I recommend, that I suggest for anybody who is starting with wood carving, it is probably the carving that I put on the most items that I've sold over the years. So there's a lot to be said for keeping things nice and simple. And I know we like to push ourselves and be ambitious in what we make, but keeping things simple can often be the best way to go. So what we do, see, to carve out a flower like this, we do all of our stop cuts. So we're just marking where we want all of those lines and then cut into the barrier created by our stop cuts. 
Same again on the inside, just to get a little bit of extra detail. Cutting at a 45 degree angle, working our way into the center. We then turn it round in the vise. If you stand to carve, don't worry about that because you're standing, you can uh, uh, just walk around the other side. Because I sit to carve, I turn it round in the vise. Little tip as well when it comes to carving, if you're a scroll saw and you fancy adding uh, the effects of wood carving to your work to give it an, a new dimension, uh, mark out with a vertical grain. Makes it easier to carve and for ourselves doing things like lead spoons here at our workshop, uh, it gives it that extra strength as well. So we just use those stop cuts as a barrier. And we've done, as I said, a lot of our basic work has already been done to get the shape of our box. You'll have to excuse as well my squeaky chair. I think it's uh, it's getting on for the time for when I need to buy a new one. And then here, just in the center, we use the reverse cutting angle just like so. So it just gives a little bit of decoration to what we're doing. Right, so carving all around the outside, just like so. Now, let's bring our box back in. See if I can find, there it is. So the, with the lid, what we do from here, there's a little mark on, on that, so we'll have to get rid of little, just a little scratch mark by there. Possibly from when it was on the base of the, of the scroll saw bed. Have I got a carving block here that I can use? Looking round, I can't find a carving block, so I'll just have to, uh, a, a sanding block, so I'll use my carving block instead. There we are, just try and get that line out. If not, we'll have to put it back on the belt sander. Right, so let's just demonstrate how we're gonna turn this into a trinket box. Again, we've got a little bit of sanding left to do. Um, what that is, we've got a few little marks left over. Those marks are from, um, the marks are from the, the super glue that we put on earlier. I just check, there's a comment on there. We'll check back two seconds for you all. Uh, the carver will not, when you flip it of course. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's have a little look here. Right. Okay, so that's bring, bringing those marks back out of it. What we do, a little spray of the accelerant. So we're using that Starbond super glue and the accelerant. And we're gonna decide, first of all, which way is it gonna sit. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So we'll super glue it down this way. So a little bit of super glue all over, just like so. And then we will just add, I'll bring it down there so you can see it better. What you're trying to do is to get it so that piece is as square in the middle as possible. If you're not happy afterwards, you can always bring it back in. And then that is a simple, famous last words, a simple little trinket box. And I know what's happened now. Let's have a little look. That should go in. What's happened? Here we are. Prize it back up. I tell you what's happened. I should have checked that before I started. Right, let's take that one back off there. Because what it is, it obviously needs to go in. Because you're doing these by hand, let's check. So it needs to go in the opposite way round. So, we'll try again, false start. That's the beauty of having the hand gouges available. You just prise it back up. I can sand where I've made that mistake down again. Line it up the best you can. And what I will do to finish it nicely, we will put it on the belt sander as well, just to finish everything off once that is super glued down. One thing I find when you're using the accelerant, you need to be really careful because it goes off very, very 
quickly. With this one, because I haven't used the accelerant second time round, we're going to clamp it in the vise. It sounds like the vise needs a little bit of oil as well. So just sticking that in like so. Move that down a bit further to get it to clamp on there. There we are. We will give that a moment and on to the next little project that we're working on. And that's these ones here. And I think we will start off on that edge there. And basically, these ones there, do you remember these from last week? That was one of the little crosses that we made. So again, we can add a little bit of accelerant to our base. And then a line of super glue across the item, just like so. Line it up. And let's try and get it now. See if I can get it right first time. It'd be a lot easier if I can. There we are, and we just super glue that into position. So we've got a simple little base, turning that into a little plaque. So this is how we sort of create um, products then from the things that we're making. That one there, the trinket box lid, should fit in now. Yeah, it does, just like so. What I would say is a little bit of difference just there. So afterwards, I can put that on the belt sander and we will sand it around just to even it up. But a very simple little trinket box where you've got that little lip. As I said, we put that on the belt sander and just finish it off afterwards. So simple design with that simple little flower. Now other items that we're working on, we've got those ones there, as we mentioned, so we can turn those into key rings, fridge magnets, whatever you want to do. The other item, I know it's not quite the time of year for it, but the other item that we're working on that we've been scroll sawing earlier is this one here, just a little robin. So what we do with that one there, we've scroll sawed that out, we drilled that pilot hole as well, and we're going to use our hand carving skills to give our robin a little bit of extra character, a little bit of interest. Just like so. And with this one, we call these 3D decorations. Because what I've got, we've got these pieces here. And when I scroll saw them, I scroll in this example four with the robin in. So we scroll saw the four and the robin, and then I scroll saw another four that are, excuse me, that are empty. And what I will do with this is we will cut them in half and we can stick them one way and the other way, just like so. Um, have you got the shellac there at all? Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. So what we do, see, we just add a little bit of detail to our Robin design. I know it's a bit early, but these are really popular. Anyone who's interested in the sort of business side of things, uh, Robins have certainly been very popular. But that's the shellac behind you, Dave. You Over the, the last. Cloth, which you've got under the bench there. Yeah. The brushes are there. And as well, if I can break into your live stream, this is a good yeah, example of exactly this one, Dave. Okay. For anybody, I know I'm breaking off now from what you're doing. Yeah. But this it's, it's might be of help to people. Right. Uh, to be able to see um, how we go about trying to satisfy a customer then. Okay. Um, if I show this one. Yeah, no worries. Okay. There we go. There's we've the got that moment. design there. And we've had a request now. That's got, if I can point out to everybody, I'll leave it there a second. It's got a, a cross with a candle, a heart, two daffodils, and a Celtic design. Yeah. And... Um, the, the customer, the, the total length of this is 46 centimetres. Right. Right. The customer likes the design. Yeah. But has only got a space of 35 centimetres. Did, 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 did we have an email about yes. this? Yeah. 
I'm trying to think what was going on. Yeah. yeah. Um, I tried to, trying to remember the email. Didn't they want roses or something exactly. as well? So instead of... But the... I, I, I was trying to say that it, it's... Um, I can't remember what I said in the email, but it... It wasn't going to. Um, it wasn't going to work the way they were sort of asking for. No. Um, um, and that's the problem. We've got. We want instead of the two daffodils and the, the Celtic eternity sign. I, th I think one thing that happens with us. Um, going off the subject. Sorry to cut across you. One thing that happens is that I think people think if it's going to be smaller, it's going to be less expensive, as Maybe. well. May not be the case in it's this not, one. This isn't the case. This, right. The case here yeah. is to go into what they call an ingle nook. Um, All right. What's one of those? It's in the fireplace. All right. Okay. Right? And there's a limited space. Yeah. So they they don't want the spoon any larger, you see, than 35. Right. But it's interesting for people, you know, in, whether you're in business or not, really, you know, we have to try and sort of accommodate... Um, the customer, yeah. By, um, instead of the two daffodils, yeah, and the eternity sign, we're looking for two roses. And what was the other symbol they were looking for? Uh, they're happy with the cross, the candle, the heart, and the um, the Celtic. Uh, sorry, the um, the two roses. They're happy with that. Yeah, but it still means a change. Yeah. Um, by taking out the daffodils and the Celtic design, you're putting two roses in there so you can reduce the length of it, which is the problem. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a, a two roses that are quite, quite an elaborate carving. Exactly, exactly. Um, well, it's on a par with two daffodils and the Celtic sign. You know what I mean? It's, it's not, it's not price-wise. I mean, the budget is no problem. Um, it's, it's just, it's just... It's a good example for how we, we sort of try to accommodate people. Yeah, it's, it's just that it's difficult to... Um... Well, we spend a lot, a lot of our time, and this is when, you know, when we're doing the live stream, as I was doing that box, and I'm working out, you know, how, how I can do it most efficiently and how I can do it most effectively and, and straightforward. That's what we spend a lot of our time doing is working out problems and yeah. working out how well, even things. With the, I, I'm, I'm going back out to the box. Even yeah. with this box, yeah. Um, one of the big problems you've you've solved it by putting that piece inside. Yeah. Right. But the other way, if you were going to go into boxes in a. Well, that now. See, what I will do is I'll put it on the belt sander just yeah. to take that a little bit off there. In a bigger way. Yeah. The next thing you would consider is. Uh, to have hinges yes. and a clasp. Yeah. Uh, then you may have to change the shape. Yeah. A clasp on that shape would be extremely difficult. Yeah, because you'd have to, I mean, if you're doing a clasp, you may have to do it there, but you'd need it curved. Yeah. Um, or yeah. Yeah. I suppose you could put a, a hinge could, there or something. You could put a hinge there and or a, a hinge on there. that side, yeah. Yeah. which would be okay, but then you have to source yeah. hinges. <laughs> And I can remember when I first started making small things like that. That was how many years ago? 72 minus 16. What's that, Dave? About 72 minus 16, about 55, 56, 56 yeah, years ago. 55, yeah. 56 years ago, uh, I, I, I lived near Cardiff and we could go to a shop called Weezbaz. Anybody listening may remember Weezbaz. It was a an ironmonger's shop, and and if and if you couldn't get it there, then you just couldn't, couldn't get, get it. it. Full stop. Um, ironmongery now, you have to look on the internet, and then you have to send for one to test it to see if it's okay. Um, quality, hobbies, quality. Hobbies was another good firm, and they are still going. Um, hobbies of London, so you can, um, you know, get, but to. You know, you you want to know how many boxes are you going to make? Is it going to be worthwhile spending time looking then for hinges? Well, basically, glass? I thought today would be a good day for for us to make a box because it's a simple little item yeah. that you can make. And after my live streaming um, 
my my I think it was my Frank Spencer style uh, live stream last week. I thought it'd be a nice one to get back into the swing of things, but also. Um, I saw that we, we've actually sold all of our little trinket boxes. Yeah. yeah. And um, and then I know we ha had the wood there in the back yeah. that I didn't have to spend too much time that's sorting right. out. So that's why I thought it would be a nice little demonstration today. Yeah. Um, so but in between making that, doing your live stream, you also now have a customer <laughs> right. that we're trying to please... Yeah. Um, um, when, did, when did you tell them? Because the other problem we've got at the moment is we, we've got a really long waiting list yeah. for bespoke work. Well, the, the spoon is required for the end of July. So, right. Uh, it's it, a bit tight even on that. It is, yeah. Um, because, but there we are. These, these are the, you know... And if anyone's thing. wondering with that, it's because bespoke work, it takes up so much yeah. of our time um, that, that for us... You know, we, we it takes our it takes our time from you know the YouTube channel. It takes our time from the workshop, um, because it's that problem solving that is a big part of what you're doing. Do you want to check on there? If you look at the comments, I think I've seen it down to, and I'm wondering if it's Michael from the colour because it's green. The I think I've seen it down to there. Michael, I'm all... Hello, Michael. It was you. I'm nice, nice to have you with us. Stick. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, Mr. Michael. Uh, okay, um, I was late. Is he making a trigger box? I, so, uh, I have. I am indeed. And now I'm on to like a 3D decoration. And in between times, Thomas Woodcarver has been uh, speaking with the customer. Okay, Aubrey Harris, I can see making three layers of a piece like this as a Christmas tree ornament. Yeah. Three Now what I'm gonna well what I'm gonna do I'm gonna shlack this and and um I tell you what we can do if you could scroll saw if you could just scroll saw two of those just cut them in half down vertically could you do that one for me straight down vertically yeah if you cut those just so everybody can see these I have demonstrated it before but it's just to give everyone an idea of some different finished products. Okay. So, to get finished off, I'm going to reposition the camera, refocus it. Uh, let's have a little look. Zoom it out a little bit, I think. Make sure everyone can see. Here we are. Right, we just reposition it over there. And we've got that one in the middle. Just like so. There we are. Hopefully you've got a decent angle to see now, because what I'm going to do, we're going to shellac some of these different items. And the idea, see, with, with all of our live streams, that's what hopefully, you know, it's just simple little products, simple ideas. Most of our channel, all simple things to, um, that, that you can sort of create a business, a woodworking business from. So there we are, a little bit of shellac. I'll make sure I put my gouges away because we don't want any shellac on those. And we take that one out of the vise. And for instance, now I know I'm gonna have to do some sanding on our trinket box. So we start off, we do some work on our cross on the stand, just like so. Here we are. I tell you what, as oh, well, Lindy. Sand them flat as well, then, don't Yeah. Do you want to sand that one just to take that edge? Okay. If you take that little lip off for me, that'll be brilliant. And then we can shellac them so everyone can see what they're like as finished products. And this is what we do now, see. So all of our workshop, everything that we're, we've got in our workshop, everything. Did you can close the door as well if you want to move that background. Thanks. Um, yeah, so what we're trying to do is to fill all of our workshop with items that are made here. We've always had items that are made by ourselves. All of our love spoons are always made here. But over the years, when we've been busier, we've had to have souvenir gifts because at different times, we'd have anything up to 10,000 visitors through the workshop. 
and so we would have to have items from the wholesalers but today we're get, getting back to a, a situation where everything is made by ourselves on site again. Right, so we've got a little bit of shellac just on there, like so. And that shows there is a little bit of sanding work left on it. But that is our first item. When it comes to the finishing, our preferred method is to use three coats of shellac sanding sealer. We rub it down in between each coat and then a, a finishing coat of linseed oil mixed with beeswax. Ah, here we are. I knew I had another one here somewhere. So this is the other cross. So we will leave that one there two seconds and we will demonstrate again the process for turning that into a cross with a base. Little squirt of the accelerant. And that is a new one, that one there. For anyone who's interested, that's like a, a little spray one, as opposed to the aerosol. That's a little one that we found, um, I actually found it on eBay, and it does does the job well. It's a, I find it a little bit sort of tidier in some ways. So again, we try and mark it out so we get it nicely on our base, just like so. There we are, super glue that one down. Yeah, that's great. And again, coat of shellac. So from last week's, um, what can we call it? Challenging live stream. We've still managed to produce a number of finished products. Okay, I think those. Was... That's brilliant, thanks dude. Brilliant. Uh, um, as best I can with that, but it may need a bit of work. Yeah, we do a little bit of work on well. that. Yeah, that's no okay. problem. Do a hand work on that one. Um, yeah, it's great. Yeah, it takes. I, I come back to that spoon I was referring to, Dave. It's a difficult one for the lady. Okay. Um, it, it takes me back to my apprenticeship. Yeah. Um, the the gentleman, uh, George Elworthy, that uh, I I served my time. He was the first carpenter that I spent my time with. Okay. Um, and um, what he always used to say was that, um, remember, he said, anyone can do the easy jobs. Yeah. <laughs> and it's right, and it's taken us um, right through to resolving this particular uh, situation for this love spoon. Um, yeah, I mean, for this lady. my my concern with, with that one will be the number of symbols. That, that'll that be the thing I'll be working out now. When it when you're looking for a love spoon of that size, that will be the thing I'll have to have a look at, is how many symbols they're wanting. Yeah. So that'll be the thing I'll be working out. But, again, going back to your point, if anyone can do the simple job. See, look, last week things didn't go right, but by this week now, we've managed to turn... Those two items yeah. where we had problems, we've rescued, yeah. we've rescued it. And at the end of the day, when somebody comes in to buy that, they don't know, you know, whoever comes in to buy that and decides they like that and want to buy that, they won't know of the challenges, unless they've seen the live stream, they won't know of the challenges that we had in making it. Nobody notices. And this is a thing that I would say quite often... And anybody, you know, you're all, if you're all, as you, as you are, you're all interested in woodwork and making things and things like that. Things that happen, like mistakes that you feel or work that you've made that you're, you may not be happy with, you'd actually be very surprised that when you show it to people, more often than not, they don't even know what you're talking about. So, you know, any issues sometimes, you, you quite often, we place greater scrutiny on ourselves um than others do oh, quite often yeah. and and sometimes jobs that you think you know haven't gone to plan and things like that other people would be delighted with right so we're just sanding on the inside of there just like so have we missed any comments there did Oh, uh, Michael was saying about, yeah, he's, he's done some work on his uh, workshop. Brilliant. Um, uh, he had to change it around a bit, I think, to uh, add some more power tools. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but he, he does like the finish you use, Di. 
Well, that is shellac. It shows the green well. That's shellac sanding sealer. We had three coats of that one, and then linseed oil mixed with beeswax. And the one we prefer, it's fiddy shellac. And the way, the reason we like it is because it gives it almost like a matte finish. Just to show you as well, that one will just go into there like so. But I'm not going to put it in for now. Right, the final thing that I'm going to demonstrate now is to put together these ones here. And I won't be able to completely finish them. But what we do, we have that going in like so. So let's have a little look. These, I've got to tell you all, if you're looking for something to make, wow. These were so, so popular. I, like, I will just show everybody that... Uh, you, well, we've made a big investment. Dave has, he showed you, you showed them last week. You, yeah, you, we, you we, know, got, we got a new yeah. brush. I know we're still using that old one, but... That's the big spending. We, we're very, um, that's, the, that's the budget blown. Let's, let's say we're rather frugal in... Uh, we're still using that old brush there and... Uh, that's the... Like that. Yeah, but that's the budget blown for the year, that is. Yeah, I know. A new brush. That's it, no more investments for for us now. Right, so that goes on there like so. I'll just give that a moment just for that accelerant to do its job. And then turn it over. Just like so. And then what I would have to do from here to finish these off we would put these on the belt sander and I would just sand and I will try and demonstrate it with the hand carving tools. I would just sand, I can come across a little bit, sand these bits to a point so it gives you a nice pointed finish. And then we drill a hole and then those, those can hang then see on the Christmas tree. It's Christmas the decorations. Ice and now it works best when it's being a final See? piece. So you go like Always so. Says, Should have seen it. That fridge magnet started out as a giant redwood tree. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Some simple little ideas. Another little insight, hopefully, into what we do and how we go about it. You've got the little trinket box, the decoration, and we've managed to salvage what we were working on last week yeah. thanks again for joining us let us know if you've got any questions as well uh thanks also for your continued support we really do appreciate it it's fantastic to be able to share what we do and um yeah it's fantastic that you all joined us and uh, hopefully it's interesting uh we've got a few more uploads coming up as always so uh, check those out hope you all have a good week and all going well, we'll be back again next week with another live stream. Thank you all for joining us.